In this video, I will show you how to do a shell swap on this type of key fob, commonly used on PSA Group car brands like Opel, Peugeot and Citroën. This includes finding a new shell, opening up the old one and transferring the important bits to the new shell. If you don't have this specific key fob, this video could still help you as long as your key fob is somewhat similar with a flip design like the ones currently shown on screen. Okay. This is my grandfather's car key. The lock button on his key has worn out and no longer works. My grandfather went to the dealership to ask for a fix or replacement and to his surprise they charged him $330 for a full replacement with that being the only option. Obviously he wasn't happy with that. And when he shared the story we decided to help. First off we need to find the right replacement shelf. This is as easy as searching for your car model with key shell replacement attached. That's where we found this shell on AliExpress for just $5. You can also go with an original key fob but those are way more expensive and harder to open up without breaking. We went with the $5 fake one instead. First off we want to remove the back plate and disconnect the battery. You can do that by resting a flathead screwdriver on the metal bit shown here and putting upward pressure on the gap between the metal and plastic of the back plate. The battery is a bit difficult to get out but enough trial and error will do the job. Next up, we'll open up the shell itself. You can do this by putting pressure with a needle nose plier in between where the flip key rests. Keep in mind that this will break the glue inside and possibly even the plastic shell. Also, this is a visual recreation. It took a lot more pressure the first time around. Here you can see just how badly the button has worn out. Completely unusable. The things we want to keep from the original key fob are obviously the PCB and the key itself. But I encourage you to briefly hold on to everything else that isn't broken for reasons shown later in the video. This is the new shell. It came with two screws for securing and a logo to insert later. The aftermarket shell is also a lot easier to open. You can simply disassemble it using your bare hands. Once inside, all we need to worry about is lining up the gap from the PCB with the plastic notch at the top of the shell. The metal outer rim is inserted simply by lining it up and dropping it in. Next up, we'll work on the back plate. We'll use the same technique we used to access the battery tray. This is also where the screws will go in later, which were not present on the original shell. This is also where I took the time to clean the metal key with some isopropyl alcohol. There was a lot of dirt in between the cracks on this one. Thankfully, it's probably just dirt and nothing else. Now let's insert the key. First, we line up the outward point bit of the spring with the small notch in the plastic frame. This enables us to wind up the key making the mechanism spring loaded. Next up we'll be putting the release button into the key. There's only one way it's gonna go in but it still didn't feel right. Through experimentation I realized that I needed to use the old button from the original shell. This is where keeping the old parts come into play as the compatibility of the new parts may vary from key to key. When you align the button you will eventually feel a click and that's when you can start winding. You can either wind the plastic or the key itself but just make sure you're winding the correct way so the key flips upward and not downward. Oh and remember, hold tightly once it's wound up or else this might happen. Now we're ready to close the shell up. You can simply line up the release button with the hole and click the two parts together. Oh yeah, about that. I wasn't very happy with how the key didn't flip up and that's when I started troubleshooting by taking it apart again. I accidentally broke the spring during this process. Good thing the old spring still works just fine. I recommend winding two times around itself as it'll still feel snappy but won't risk breaking the spring on like three winds. Turns out everything was fine, it just needed a bit of forcefully opening up the key and after a few attempts it finally started to flip by itself. Then all we need to do is screw the shell shut and insert the battery. I opted for using a new battery just because the old one hadn't been changed in nearly 10 years, so it was about time. Before clicking the battery cover in, we first needed to insert the logo. I found it a bit difficult to do it by hand, so I carefully pushed it down using pliers. All the buttons click perfectly and the flip mechanism works well enough. It just needs a bit of assistance to lock in place, but this will happen automatically once it's inserted into the car. This is one of the risks of buying cheap off-brand parts on the internet. With this shell replaced, it was finally time to visit my grandfather and test it out. Det virkede fandme. Så lige så man kan åbne op. Og hvis jeg så låser. Det virker. Super. Super. Jamen, så virker den igen. The key fob works just fine and with around $325 saved, I consider this mission successful.